here's what I found last week that is key. So what we did is we implemented an accountability program uh, with our agents um, so that they could actually talk about it and discover the disconnects. So how are things going? Great. Let's talk about that more specifically and dig down into each of those areas and figure out where the hits and misses are and how we can improve and make this work. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow. Ah. Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. This is episode 82, and uh, obviously, there's nobody sitting next to me, which is usually my business partner, Joseph Caldwell, uh, but wanted to come at you guys with something a little bit different uh, in this episode, and I wanted to talk to you about an experience that I've had um, over last week in the accountability calls that I've been doing uh, with our clients with Core 4. And Core 4 is something that I learned from Sean Whalen. Uh, for those of you that don't follow Sean Whalen, definitely check him out. Uh, but Core 4, it's basically just a way of breaking up your life into four areas. It's four Ps. Uh, you've got power, which is your body, purpose, which is your mind, passion, which is your relationships, and production, which is your business. And you break those down into those areas make three goals in each area and you're evaluating those every 90 days. So it's a 90 day goal, three of them in each of those areas and it becomes the structure at which you live your life. Uh, it really simplifies things in the way that you live your life because you know at the end of the day if I did these things then done for the day and, and you uh, are able to keep that momentum rolling uh, for 90 days and then 90 days later you reevaluate. Hey, what are those things did I um, really excel in? What are those things that I really struggle in? And some of those things that you excelled in no longer have to be a part of that because now it's part of your routine, right? You've done it for 90 days. So if it's wake up at 5 a.m. instead of 6, well, I did it for 90 days. I don't really need to be reminded of that anymore. I can just wake up at 5 a.m. So let's add another area uh, to focus on over the next 90 days and, and looking at that for all the areas. Here's what I found last week that is key. So what we did is we implemented an accountability program uh, with our agents um, so that they could actually talk about it and discover the disconnects. So how are things going? Great. Let's talk about that more specifically and dig down into each of those areas and figure out where the hits and misses are and how we can improve and make this work. And so what did that look like? So we get on a uh, Zoom conference, basically just a video conference uh, with each of these people. It's like 37 of them, typically about an hour long. And we just go through each of them, each of those four, and say, okay, let's start with power. It says on here that um, you're going to work out uh, first thing in the morning, uh, five days a week. So how's that going? Well, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it was really good for the first, you know, about week and a half, two weeks, but, you know, really it's been kind of hit or miss over the last two weeks. Okay, well, all right, so what's going on on the mornings that you're not getting up and working out? Well, you know, I had to, I had to take my daughter to school one day because uh, my wife had this thing going on. Um, you know, I was just overloaded at work. And, and so then we would work through those obstacles and those struggles and figure out, okay, what can we do um, to ensure that we don't mess it up for the next 30 days? Like, for example, here's a really great example of how we um, were able to to really implement a strategy so that it actually fixes the problem. So a lot of people had a, a date night with their spouse. So, okay, John, it says that you're going to have a date night every Saturday night, non-negotiable with your spouse. How was your date last Saturday? Ah, well, we, you know, we weren't, we weren't able to do it this past weekend. Okay. Well, why? Well, we just, we weren't able to get a babysitter. Like, great. I completely understand certainly, but let's, get online right now. Let's go to care.com. Uh, let's go find another babysitter because you've probably only got one. Let's get another one in your arsenal so that if that one's not available, you've got another one that you can call and, and see if they can uh, fill in. Now, let's also sit down and let's plan out your date night for next Saturday. Like, let's what, what restaurant do you want to go to? Do you want to go see a movie? Do you want to go do something? Like, what's that going to look like? You know, flowers, all that kind of good stuff. So you're actually 
putting tangible plans in place and structures in place so that it doesn't happen again and so that you can actually follow through with what you said was non-negotiable and more importantly what you said was important to build that relationship with your spouse. We're doing this in all areas so like using headspace uh, for meditating every morning. Almost all of the people that I'm coaching with are, are doing that. So let's figure out why they are not doing it because inevitably I'll talk to someone and they'll say, um, hey, 10 minutes headspace meditation every morning, first thing, how's it going? Well, yeah, I'd say I'm 50-50, okay? On the 50% that you're not doing it, what's happening on those mornings? What's happening to make it to where you don't do it? Well, yeah, I mean, it just got busy. I was just rushed and I had to decide between, you know, showering or getting my 10 minute meditation in and I'd felt like showering was more important. Okay, cool. So what structures can we put in place so that that doesn't happen again? And oh yeah, by the way, why didn't you just do it later that afternoon? Why didn't you knock it out that night before you went to bed? Just because you're not meditating first thing in the morning doesn't mean that you can't meditate you know, at a random 10 minute segment at your office or in your car uh, part, preferably, um, while you're in the middle of the day. Um, so we just went through these processes and that process of accountability is paramount to actually sticking to these things. It's one thing to just write out a bunch of goals, it's another to have another third party call you out on them. Not just call you out on them saying like, shame on you, you were supposed to do the headspace meditation every single day, what kind of person are you, you're a failure. But actually say no, like, I get it. I'm not okay with it, but I get it. Let's figure out a way to put a structure in place um, so that you can make that happen because there was a reason why you said it was important. And so this, this process was awesome for me because I was able to have real uh, impactful and deep conversations uh, with these people that were, uh, that were really, I mean, it was, it was, I got a lot of value just from the conversations that I was able to have uh, with them and see how it was impacting their life. The coolest thing that I found was the ripple effect when someone was taking it seriously in that when you take something like this seriously, when, you're, when your life starts to change, when you start implementing uh, structures and procedures and, and, air, and these things into your life, you can't just be quiet about it. Number one, people are gonna start noticing, but number two, you can't stop talking about it with other people. It's kinda like CrossFit or being you know, vegan. Like You have to tell everybody that that's what you do, right? The same thing is when you're getting your life in order. And so I had one conversation with a guy who's working out um, almost every day, and he hadn't worked out in years, and he's now like, if he's feeling a little better, he's lost some weight, he's got some muscles that are showing up, and it's affecting his energy, and it's affecting, it's affecting how his wife's looking at him you know, at night. And he had a phone call with a friend of his, and he said, man, this friend of mine, he was always super successful. It's like everything he did just turned to gold. Uh, he said, but I'd had a call with him, and I hadn't talked to him in a couple of years, and some things had, had gone south. He was, he was struggling. And he said that he asked him, he said, well, you know, are you, are you, how's your health? You know, are you staying in shape? Are you, are you working out? Are you, are you meditating? Are you doing things? And the guy said, no, I'm, I'm not. You know, I hadn't worked out in years. And so now the cool thing, that guy, the very next morning, sent him a text message of a picture of him on the treadmill uh, at like 6 a.m. and was like, hey man, really appreciate our conversation. I'm on the treadmill this morning. And has since then sent him a text message like every day. And now they're keeping each other accountable. Well, imagine the ripple effect that has, um, not only just in your um, personal relationships, but then they go and share it with someone, and then they go and share it with someone, and the impact it could have potentially on the world just because one person decided to hold another uh, accountable. So it's been really cool to see. I love seeing that, that kind of that glimmer of hope in someone's eye when they start to grow and they start to level up and they be start, start to better themselves. Uh, and then when they get to the point where they're actually sharing it with other people, it's just, it's fantastic. And so what I would encourage you coming out of this podcast is to number one, whether it's core four or you can go to, there's a million different structures in ways that you can set goals in your life. But whatever that is, make sure number one, that you have measurable goals. And by measurable, meaning that you can look back after 30 days and say, did I do it or did I not? Did I succeed or did I fail? Not just like my goal is to be in better shape. Eh, okay, well, my goal is to work out five days a week for one hour first thing in the morning. That's measurable. Did I do it or did I not? My goal is to get to a size 30 waist. I'm at a 34 now. You know, those things are measurable. 
Then find someone that'll hold you accountable. Find a friend that you can do this with. Um, I personally don't think it's something that you want to do with your spouse. It may, it may be something that you and your spouse can do together. Uh, but to me, like same sex accountability partner, friend that, that can hold you accountable, that's going to call you out on your stuff. That's not just going to be like, oh, that's cool, man. You didn't, you didn't do it. I didn't really do it either. So cool. And you can just kind of have that whole misery loves company uh, environment for the rest of your life and stay the same and never level up. But get that accountability in your life. It is the only way to grow. And so just wanted to come at you guys with that uh, on this quick episode of the Sales Wolves podcast about the importance of developing structures for goal setting and more importantly, structures for keeping yourself accountable. Uh, I can guarantee you that if you do that, nothing, nothing but good things will happen. So with that, this is episode 82. I'm Tyler Harris, your host. This is the Sales Wolves podcast, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!